Okay, hello everyone. Good, good afternoon. I hope everyone is doing well in this Friday. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here in this incredible event. So my name is Andriele and I am postdoc in the Mine Lab. And today I want to share some results about the liver leptin receptor gene networks that interact with early life adversity to program mental health problems. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes here to explain the rationale behind this project, and then I move on to the results. So everyone here knows so well that mental disorders such as depression and anxiety are highly prevalent and often comorbidity with uh, metabolic syndrome. And of course, uh, the exposure to early life adversity is a risk factor for both the metabolic and behavioral problems. However, the casual association between these met mental disorders and metabolic syndromes remain unclear. And the disruption of leptin or insulin signaling in the brain has been associated as one of the causes of psychiatric disorders. For example, beyond its well-known action as an energy uh, regulator, leptin is linked to psychiatric disorders. And although the association between the leptin and mental health disorders has been identified, the potential mechanism that may underlie this association needed to be further understood. And on the other hand, there is a great deal of evidence indicating that early life stress is a major risk factor for the development of psychiatric disorders and metabolic syndrome. So we set up to ask if, assuming that the association between genetic and early environmental factors contribute to psychopathology, the disruption of leptin signaling could be a key mechanism in the interaction between early life adversity and mental health disorders. And here about the leptin. So the leptin is a hormone secreted by the adipose tissues that act mainly as a regulator of food intake and body weight regulation. And the leptin receptor are uh, mainly expressed in the hypothalamus, but they are also widely expressed in other brain regions, such as the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, and the hypothalamus, and also in other peripheral regions, such as the liver, as you can see in this figure here. And we, in fact, we previously confirmed that the interaction between the gene network co-expressed with the leptin receptor in the prefrontal cortex, but not in the hypothalamus, modulate the association between early life adversity on eating behavior of children. And here we are interested in explore if being exposure to stress during early life induces um, um, alteration in leptin signaling, which alters the metabolism and behavior outcomes. So the question here was if the liver leptin receptor co-expression gene network moderate the effects of early life adversity on the motion of the disorder over the lifespan. So for this, we constructed an expression-based polygenic risk score that reflects the function of the leptin receptor gene network in the liver. And we analyzed the interaction of this EPRS with a postnatal adversity score on behavior related to mental health uh, problems and also uh, metabolic measurements using three both cohorts. So the Maven cohorts we are using to analyze ch ch uh, childhood, the Alspy cohort to analyze adolescents, and the UK Biobank to analyze adults. So first we create the expression-based polygenic risk score, the EPRS. And for, for this, you use a genes co-expressed with leptin receptor in the liver. And we also create a, a EPRS for the hypothalamus that was used as a control. And we also create a postnatal adversity score using a measure and combine multiple indicators of adversity, for example, hospitalization, birth size, or gestational age. And then we start to look at the relationship between environmental exposure and a leptin receptor gene network to predict some potential behavioral problems. 
So starting with children for Maven, we evaluate the score of depressive uh, problems, somatic complaints, internalizing problems, and emotionally reactive problems at four years old. What's happened here is that the interaction between the adverse score and the liver leptin receptor EPRS predicts somatic complaints, internalizing problems, and emotionally reactive problems in children at um, five, four years old. And simple slope analysis showed that the uh, increase of postnatal adversity uh, was associated with higher behavioral problems as the uh, EPRS increases. Of course, here, the solid uh, dark blue lines represent the higher EPRS and the light blue lines represent the low EPRS. And similar results were found with children at five years old. So this result suggests that children exposed to uh, adversity respond with more uh, behavioral problems in a higher EPRS of the liver leptin receptor gene network, and children uh, exposed to adversity respond with less problematic behavior in a lower EPRS of the leptin receptor gene network. And interestingly, we also observe an interaction between the postnatal adverse score and the liver leptin receptor gene network on depressive problems at four and also five years old. And here uh, you can see that depressive behavior seems to be greater in children exposed to high adversity in a higher EPRS of the leptin receptor. And and uh, interesting is that depressive problems was also aligned with the differential susceptibility theory, suggesting that some of these individuals are more susceptible to variation in the environment, presenting the best outcome in a more positive environment and the worst um, outcome in a more negative environment. And here are the results for adolescents. So to analyze if the results found in childhood have long less effects, you use another cohort, the AUSPAC, and significant interaction effects between the adverse score and the liver leptin receptor EPRS was observed for a number of somatic symptoms and also depression score. And once again, increasing in postnatal adversity is associated with higher depressive score in a higher EPRS. And finally, you use the UK Biobank, so another cohort, to investigate uh, this result in adults. So here, the results were replicated considering uh, social anxiety and sociophobia, and also obsessive compulsive disorder. And how about the interaction between the, uh, the EPRS in the hypothalamus and emotional behaviors? So no interactions were found here, suggesting that the effects of leptin receptor EPRS uh, in response to a diversity are specific to genes co-expressed with leptin in the liver. And to confirm if our results were related to variation in leptin levels, we also compare, uh, compare the plasma leptin levels in groups of higher and low EPRS. However, no difference were found here. So is the gene network itself and not the amount of leptin that seems to interact with postnatal adversity uh, score to predict mental health problems. So after that, we start to analyze the genes of this gene network to better understand our findings. And using the metacore analysis, we observe that this gene network is associated with leptin signaling, of course, carbohydrate and lipid metabolism pathways as expected. However, this gene network is also associated with inflammatory process and transcription of sirtuin 6 uh, which is associated with resistance to DNA damage and oxidative stress. And the interesting thing here is that some studies have been suggesting that inflammatory process represent a stronger contributor of uh, metabolic-related depressive symptoms. So these pathways here may explain at least in part our findings. 
So this he, uh, this figure here is a gene network defined now a list of, of, of genes, included 36 genes. And uh, when we analyze this as the most important genes of this gene network, we observe two uh, important genes, the SVIL or superverlin gene that was uh, previously identified as a differential expression genes on the prefrontal cortex of individuals with major depressive disorders. And also this gene here, the AKR1D1, that is a gene associated with hepatic functions. So our data support the hypothesis that exposure to postnatal adversity predict mental health problems in children, adolescents, and adults of different population. And the liver leptin receptor gene network is one important moderator of these effects, probably due to the metabolic and inflammatory pathways that this gene network is related to. Uh, with that, I, I would like to thank you, my colleagues from my lab, and also my advisor, Dr. Pat Patricia, and uh, Dr. Mini. And thank you for your attention. And now, uh, uh, this is my email, and I will take any questions from you. Thanks so much. Uh, does anyone have a question? Okay. I'll, maybe I'll start you out here. Um, I might have missed it, but can you tell me a little bit more about how you quantified that adversity in the samples and, and how you sort of tried to get equivalent scores there? Okay, so uh, for the adversity score, we, we analyze if children have one of these um, indicators of adversity and if okay. each children yeah, and the presence of each component of this questionnaire wired one point in the final score. And so it was okay, sort of like an ACEs checklist. So each of these yeah. is one. Okay. Yeah. And how did you come up with this list? Is this a, yeah, is this a, a tool or, or did you guys kind of come up with this based on how we know these affect outcomes? So each one of these uh, indicators is um, related to some questionnaire or some indicator of adversity. So with, mm -hmm. the, with that, we construct this list of possible adversity uh, indicators. Great. It's a nice use of, of those existing cohorts. So it could work. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have a question?